Hello guys. Today we are going to see about solid state. This is the part 3. In this part 3, we are going to see effects, defects in crystals, Bragg's law equation, crystallography, crystallography and different planes in that, Wies and Miller indices, interplanar space and angle formula. The next, first we are going to see the crystals. Two types of defects is there. This is the basic starting defects. One is electronic defect. Another one is atomic or point defect. In this electronic defect, this will leads to the intrinsic defect which is having free electrons and holes. And in atomic or a point defect, which is further classified as stoichiometric defects, non-stoichiometric defects and impurity defects. Let us see about first one, electronic imperfection. Okay. What is electronic imperfection? See here, I highlighted the free electrons, holes and intrinsic conduction. In the electronic imperfection, the main thing is intrinsic conduction is there with free electrons and holes. So that's why I highlighted this. How would this happen? At 0 Kelvin, that is above the 0 Kelvin, the silicon and germanium releases the electron from the covalent bonds on thermal heat okay on heating that's why this leads to that free electrons and there is a deficient in the covalent bond you know that's why it's create a holes okay the free electrons and holes is because of the electrons from the covalent bond so this leads to the responsible for the intrinsic conduction and next we are going to see these free electrons and holes in solids gives rise gives rise to the electronic imperfection Atomic or point defects. What is atomic and point defect? This is irregularity in the arrangement of atoms or it may be ions. That we call it as atomic defects. Irregularity of atoms we call it as atomic or point defects. Let's see the how it's segregating. So it's, it is classified as stoichiometric, non-stoichiometric and impurity defects. This stoichiometric means, what is the stoichiometric? It will be equal of ions, okay? It's a one is to one of ions. Non-stoichiometric means that will be not there. Impurity defects, like that it is classified. This stoichiometry is further classified as Schottky defects, Frenkel defects and interstitial defects. This non-stoichiometric defects is further classified as metal excess or metal deficiency. So it, may, it is not as a one is to one ratio. Okay. So it may be a cation may be excess or it may be anion may be excess. So metal excess or metal it may be less. Okay. How the metal is excess? The metal excess it may be a due to uh, negative vacancies or it may be extra positive in their interstitial sites. The anion is negative, you know, the cation is positive. That's why it's saying like this. So Im impurity defects. Impurity defects is further, we can see this impurity defects in covalent solids as well as in the ionic solids. Let us see what is a stoichiometric effect. And the first classification of the stoichiometric effects is Schottky defects. Schottky defects. What is Schottky defects? There is a missing of a positive as well as the negative electrons. So see here in this lattice is both here the cation is missing in the, around the anion is there cation is missing here the cation is there but one anion is missing over here so the missing of both positive and the negative ion so that the electrically neutral it is the electrical neutrality is maintained in the lattice that's why it's short key defect that's why they are classified as stoichiometric effects one is to one ratio will be maintained over here see here a plus and b minus equal number of anions and cations are missing from the lattice sites so that the electrical neutrality is maintained this is this we call it as a short key defect which type of uh, which type of crystals will show this defect see plus and minus is there so ionic compounds highly ionic compounds will show this effects so only the ionic compound it's, is there any special character is there for ionic compound what are all the characters the ionic compounds which contains high coordination number and the cation and the anion you know that is on similar size will shows this effect you need to remember these two one is high coordination number and the cation and anion of similar size same size the examples are potassium chloride sodium chloride silver bromide potassium bromide and cesium chloride and what are all the consequences? If the defect is there in the lattices, what is what will, what will happen? See, here both plus and minus is missing. So what will happen? The density is in decreases. The volume is looks to be the same, but what will happen? Uh, density will decrease. The volume uh, uh, mass will decrease. So uh, density is also decreases. 
we'll see the one by one what are all the consequences is there as the number of ion decreases the volume is same a density will be decreases what will happen if the crystal with the short key defect its conduct electricity very small electrical conduct uh, electricity conduction will be there and this is because of an ion moves from its lattice sites and occupies a hole and creates a new hole okay if there is a hole is there it will move you know the ions will keep on moving from here and there that's the movement will be there so because of the movement stability will not be there so stability of the crystal will decreases okay if it move here and there you know that the stability will not be there the holes move across the crystal as a result the moves and the charges in the opposite direction so if it moves one side so the positive charge also will moves in uh, moves in that same way so it will keep on moving due to the presence of holes the stability of the crystal will decrease stability of the crystal will not be there in short key defect and now let us see the frenkel defects what is frenkel defect a frenkel a defect is sum of see this is also one is to one here the positive ion is not in their place and create a hole and it is placed in the interstitial sites this vacancy or hole is there in the site okay that is the friend call defect but overall the neutrality is maintained in that this is a stoichiometric effect so the neutrality will be always maintained electrically neutral L neutrality is maintained C. If the ion is missing from its lattices and creates a hole and occupies the interstitial site, so that the electrical neutrality as well as the stoichiometry of the compound is maintained. This defect of uh, this defect is called as a Frenkel defect. Since the size of the cation is generally smaller, is more likely that the cation occupies the interstitial sites. C. The cation, the size of the cation is small, so that what will happen? Wherever the gap is there, it will go and get, get inside into the uh, get into the interstitial sites. And the next Frenkel defect, which type of compound will have a Frenkel defect? And what is the main thing in that compound? So the compound which is having low coordination number, the short key defect is high coordination number. For Frenkel defect, this is a low coordination number. And for the short key, uh, the size of the anion and cation will be same. But here, the large difference between the size of the anion and the cation cag cl silver chloride silver bromide silver iodide and zinc sulfide this cation and anion size will be uh, difference will be there that's why this cation is very small and go into the interstitial sites and what are the consequences is there if the frenkel defect is there in the crystal what is the consequences we feel first one and we will see the density density is a very important point we need to compare the short key and the frenkel defect in the short key what will happen both cation and anion is missing so the density will be less but here there is a no nothing is missing everything is there in that uh, lattice itself instead of the place it's a little bit moved and into get into the interstitial sites so the density will not be changed the density will be maintained as it is that's why here mentions uh, density is unchanged the solid uh, here the solid with this effect conduct electricity of small extent here also uh, electrical electrical conductivity will be there that is also very small and dielectric constant of the crystal is increases due to the presence of the hole the step of the crystal decreases for both the cases the main thing we need we need to see is density the next one is interstitial defects is the third one in the stoichiometry interstitial defects is what what is the interstitial defects what will happen it may be an atom or ion which occupy the interstitial position of the crystal that's why it is called as interstitial defects the important factor in determining the formation of the interstitial is the size of the atom we have to see the size of the atom because they are occupied into the voids. That's why this is the, this is called as a interstitial defects. What is non-stoichiometric defects? So in this non-stoichiometric defects, the cation and the anion will not be same. That's why we call it as non-stoichiometric. In the stoichiometric, both will be the same. Okay. So the electrical neutrality will be maintained. Here the metal excess defect. The first one we are going to see is metal excess defect. The metal is going to be excess. In which way it going to be excess? By anionic vacancies if anion if negative charge is not there what will happen the positive charge remains and uh, it will be as it is so it will be excess see in this picture here the anion is not there only cations are surrounded so it creates the hole in that place so what will happen the, uh, the cation which releases the electron which get into that and uh, trapped into that hole okay this electron is we call it as Furban center, this uh, this electron we call it as a Furban center or F center or 
color center we can call it as a three name this gives color to the crystals if you take a sodium chloride crystal it gives yellow color if you take lithium chloride it gives a pink color and if it is a potassium chloride it violet color and next we are going to see metal excess and next type of metal excess and deficiency defects the first we have seen metal excess by anion vacancies now the metal excess and deficiency defects by extra cation in the interstitial sites extra cation will be there see here extra cation plus the electrons will be there by heating this cation what will happen it releases the anion sorry it releases the electrons okay and it becomes positive cations it becomes positive positive charge if you heat the metal it gives electrons plus positive charge so what will happen this positive charge that is this cation and the electrons occupy in the interstitial position okay interstitial a space <coughs> see the equation example also given here if you take a zinc oxide is heated it loses the oxygen and it turns yellow see the equation zinc oxide on heating it becomes zn2 plus and electrons this positive charge and this electrons occupies the interstitial position the excess zn2 plus that is zinc 2 plus get trapped into the vacant interstitial sites and the electrons in the neighboring sites trapped into the vacant interstitial sites and next electron will be in the neighboring sites it turns yellow when hot and it turns white when it is cool the next one is deficiency defects metal deficiency defects these two are to, belongs to the non stoichiometric effect the metal deficiency defect if you see here the metal is not there okay but instead of a plus here a 2 plus is there higher um, higher oxidation state is also there higher valency uh, metal is there metal deficiency uh, due to a missing of cation of lower valency and the presence of the cation of higher valency higher valency see here this defect occurs when when the metal shows a variable valency if the metal shows a variable valency if this is moves then the heat creates a hole instead of that one more metal it occupies this place okay this gives the uh, neutrality because of this okay if one is gone instead of one here two has come a two plus is there one is vacant and one in one place this is occupied so the electrical neutrality is maintained it occupies due to a missing of the cation with higher charge in the adjacent site instead of plus 2 is plus uh, instead of a plus 1 plus 2 is there plus 2 instead of plus 1 here the oxidation state is plus 1 instead of that plus 2 is there an example for this type of metal deficiency defect is transition elements feo fes and nickel oxide okay if fe fe you know fe2 plus and fe3 plus will be there if fe2 plus is missing means nearby a cation is nearby cation is fe3 plus okay like that metal deficiency is showing in that fe impurity defects this is the third one in the impurity defect first one stoichiometric second non stoichiometric the third one is impurity defects this impurity defects we can see in the covalent solids as well as in the ionic solids how it will be in the covalent solids if it is a covalent solids you can see that uh, group uh, 13 and a group uh, 15 elements okay in between group 14 element is there this group 14 element may form a bond with group 15 or group 13 this group 13 is having a one electron less and group 15 is having one electron high or the one valence electron high the group 13 is having one valence electron less this group 14 can make an uh, this is a group uh, 14 is an electron deficient okay leading to electron deficient bond and it forms a hole when it uh, have a uh, when it have a comparison with group 13 if it compare with the group 15 what will happen if it forms a valence electron have one valence electron excess as compared to the group 14 elements and therefore what will happen after forming the four covalent bond one electron remains in excess that will gives to the electrical conductivity so here one electron will be remains excess so it gives electrical conductivity so because of this this bond one will be a n type another will be a p type this group 14 element is grouped with the group 15 elements and it gives n type semiconductor whereas the n indicating the negative charge flow and in the 14 if it is grouped with the group 13 elements and it is called as a p type semiconductors and it will and it will create the p indicates the positive hole okay here the positive flow will be there positive hole movement so this we call it as covalent 
solids. So covalent solids which is having positive hole or negative hole. That may be a n type semiconductors or p type semiconductors. When will be the n type? The n type means a 14 is duped with 15 means excess means then it is uh, n type semiconductor because the excess negative charge flow will be there. If it is a positive charge flow means the, n the 14th element is duped with the 13, the one uh, electron less. If it is duped with one electron less, then it will be positive charge will be there. The positive flow moment will be there. And th this is the covalent solids. And next step is ionic solids. In this ionic solids, impurities are introduced into that uh, ion, introduced into the lattice. This impurity is due to the different oxidation state forms that of the host ion. The host ion will be in different oxidation state and the impurity will be in different oxidation state. Because of that, the vacancy will be created. See here, we will see the example then we will come to know. If molten sodium chloride is there, this contains strontium chloride as an impurity. So, what will happen if you allow to cool the sodium chloride lattices this Na plus is substituted by the strontium 2 plus. So, to, uh, to maintain the neutrality, to maintain the electrical neutrality, this is, uh, instead of this strontium 2 plus, 2 Na plus will be more outside of the lattices. So, then only the Na plus and strontium 2 plus will be equal. So, that one in, in the place of 1 Na plus, this will be occupied. In another Na plus, the whole will be remains as it is. Okay, if you see here, in one place of the Na, Na plus, Na plus is remains and in that place this will be occupied substituted and another one is remains as it is so it will create a, a hole this impurity we call it as ionic solids the next one we are going to see is Bragg's equation what is Bragg's equation the Bragg's equation everyone knows that and lambda is equal to 2t sin theta how it is happening the x-ray is uh, the x-ray of uh, uh, lambda x-ray of wavelength incident on the plane and it's uh, uh, reflected okay and it's scattered in the angle of uh, 2 theta okay see here the incident wave and the scattered wave is equal okay this d is just called as a difference between the two plane that is mentioned as a d the lambda is the wavelength of the x-rays okay n is an integer so the theta is the angle that's why we call it as Bragg's equation this is a we know about this and crystallography, different planes and crystals. How to uh, find out the different planes and the crystals? The first example we are going to see this. See here, there is a three axes there in the cube. This is the x axis, this is y axis, and this is z axis. In which, in, in this plane, in which uh, axis it intersects, that we considered as a one. Okay. See, in this x axis, in this y axis, it is not, this plane is not at all intersecting. Okay. It is not at all intersecting. So, one, this and this as considered as a zero. This is intercept only on this plane. So, this as considered as a 1. The next example, see here. This is the plane. So, this in this intersect only on x. Okay. This is not at all intersect in the x, uh, z and the y axis. So, x is only 1 and y and z is 0. x, y, z. The next two are 0. The third example is, see, in this plane, this is the y-axis. This intersect on the y-axis. And the remaining two planes are 0. x and z are 0. y is 1. In the fourth example, see this plane and this plane. This is intersect on the z-axis and x-axis, not in the y-axis. So, the y, play, y places we have to put 0 and x and z places 1 and 1. And the fifth example, this is intersect on x and y. It's not in the z. So, in the place of x and uh, uh, y we need to put as 1 and in the place of y we need to mention as 0. And the last one intersect on z and y not in the x plane. So x plane we have to mention as 0 and the next two planes mention as 1 and 1. The next V's and V's and Miller indices. What is the mean? How to find out the V's and how to find out the Miller indices? The V's indices is that indicates the phase intercepts where the plane is intercept on the x or y and z axis. That means that is called that uh, intercepts we mentioned in the vector form that is uh, V's indices. The reciprocal of this V's indices we call it as Miller indices. Okay, we will see how to determine this. In the first, the first step we need to find the intercepts of the plane where it intersects. intercepts. And the next one a reciprocal of that in intercept. 
if the reciprocal is having uh, fractions if the fractions comes means what we have to do we need to take the uh, least common fa fraction and that fraction with that fraction we need to multiply with the um, denominator so that that is the that from that we need to take the smallest fraction see here i'll show you one example see in x axis if you see here in x axis this is the one the half is there so this is 1 by 2 you have to mention the as 1 by 2 length of the as 1 by 2 here if you see b it's completely this is a 1 so we mentioned as 1 here see here this is not half and this is not 1 if this is half and this is 3 by 4 so 3 by 4 is the c so we need to find the miller indices for this what to do we need to find the reciprocal first if you reciprocal it so what will happen 1 by 1 by 2 so this is 1 by 1 1 by 3 by 4 otherwise we can say it as 2 1 4 by 3 that is also we can say so we need to find the um, fraction for this one is fraction is there one is whole number so we need to find the fraction so 3 we can take it 3 as a fraction and multiply with every one 2 3s are 6 3 ones are 3 here 4 by 3 into 3 what will happen this 3 and 3 will get cancelled listen to me I will write down so that it's easy for you to take it out so let's see here here uh, 4 by 3 into 3 okay we need to multiply with the 3 with every one 2 3s are 6 3 ones are 3 here 3 into 3 means this 3 and this 3 will get cancelled okay so only 4 will be there so what will be the plane for this 6 3 4 this is the Miller indices and the next one is interplanar space and angle what is the interplanar space the distance between the two planes we call it as interplanar space okay the distance the space means distance we can say it as interplanar distance also the inter the, uh, the distance between the two planes we call it as interplanar distance interplanar space the formula for this is we can mention that as a d we can mention that as a d d is equal to a divided by root of h square plus k square plus l square this h square k square l square is the plane that we saw that a plane you know the intersection of the plane of x y and z axis that we call that we have written as h square k square l square the a is the length the length of the cube okay and the next one what is the angle between the two plane what is the formula for the angle between the two planes means cos theta is equal to h1 h2 plus k1 k2 plus l1 l2 divided by the root of h1 square plus k1 square plus l1 square and cube root of h2 square plus k2 square plus l2 square so this is the formula for the angle between the two planes and i have written for all the cubic all the crystal systems okay this is for the cubic tetragonal orthogonal this is also for cubic these two are same only this is not different these two are uh, same that i'll explain again cubic tetragonal orthorhombic and this is cto okay in this way you if you learn it it will be easy for you okay and then trigonal hexagonal monoclinic and the last is triclinic you can see this is the very big uh, formula why is it so you know that the length and the angle will be different so a which is e is not equal to b b is not equal to c so all the lengths are different and all the angles are different so everything is mentioned separately that's why it's a very big equations see here in this cubic crystals this these two are same how i am saying these two are same you know if you square this equation what will happen this become a square okay d square a square divided by this root will be get cancelled while squaring this root will be get cancelled and this is the uh, reciprocal of this okay one by the uh, reciprocal of this what will happen this will come down and this will go up so h square plus k square plus l square divided by a square so both of them are equal okay just is the basically if you want to use this equation means you can use it but sometimes in options they may give like this that's why i have mentioned like this also to know that see here here all the cube means all the sides are equal a is equal to b is equal to c i already said in the equation also in the structure also you can verify with the structure also you can learn the length okay a is equal to b is equal to c so all the length are equal so we can mention a is a square okay if you see here a two is equal one is different a is equal to b but it is not equal to c one of the length is not equal so a and b place we can mention as a and the c place is mentioned as it is c see here you know in orthorhombic all the threes are not equal okay but angle are equal see so h square plus b square plus c square okay see here h square uh, sorry, a square plus b square plus c square all the length is not equal so that's why they are mentioned separately
So in the same way, we can compare it and you can uh, identify the equations easily. That is also one of the method you can easily identify. Thanks for watching. Subscribe my channel. Click the bell button to receive upcoming videos. Thank you.